here for you. Fox 4 News starts now. Hello, I'm Dan Godwin with a look at what's making news in North Texas. A court hearing next Tuesday will review a notorious Kaufman County murder case. Former Justice of the Peace Eric Williams is seeking a new trial for the murders of District Attorney Mike McClellan, his wife Cynthia, and prosecutor Mark Hasse. Williams was convicted of capital murder in 2014. He's on death row with no execution date scheduled. Williams claims he has brain damage with evidence that was discovered after his trial. His attorneys argue they did not have adequate time to prepare and that the trial should have been relocated because of publicity. A previous appeal of his conviction was rejected. His ex-wife Kim Williams was sentenced to 40 years for her role in the murders. Two Haltham City police officers and the other driver are in the hospital after an overnight crash. Police say the officers were responding to a call around midnight when they were involved in a collision with a vehicle at the intersection of Haltham Road and the Loop 820 service road. It's not yet, yet known who was at fault. The Haltham City PD says the officers and the driver are all being treated for non-life-threatening injuries. Investigators say a disruptive passenger forced an American Airlines flight out of Dallas to divert to Amarillo. The plane left DFW yesterday afternoon for Bozeman, Montana. The flight crew reported a violent passenger and the aircraft was rerouted to Amarillo. Keith Edward Fagiana was removed from the flight and taken into FBI custody. No injuries were reported and the flight continued to Montana. A huge training exercise is underway in Irving to prepare police and firefighters to deal with an active shooter. It's the kind of instruction they hope they never have to use, but must know in the event it does happen. 300 people, including officers, firefighters, paramedics, and volunteers are gathered at Nimitz High School for the training. In the simulated exercise, a school officer must confront a shooter and coordinate with responding officers. The idea is you know, we don't exactly know how they're going to react, where they're going to come in, what the officer who's on scene or the subsequent officers that are here are going to be telling them. Is that going to create more confusion? And so that, that's part of the exercise to judge where they're going to go and how they're going to deal with the threats that are present at the time. Irving police officers are required to take part in this type of training every year to make sure they're up to date on the latest and most effective tactics. A man had his leg severed when a pickup truck crashed into him on New Year's Day. 30-year-old Thomas Toledo was standing on the pavement next to his motorcycle when police say he was hit by a truck. It happened on McKee Street near downtown Dallas. Police arrested Keandre Nash and charged him with intoxication assault. According to an arrest warrant affidavit, Nash was driving away from another crash. People in the vehicle he had previously hit were reportedly trying to fight him. As he drove off, police say he collided with a Jeep, a motorcycle, and Thomas Toledo. He calls him, I love you, Mom. Tell everybody I love them. I don't know if I'm going to make it. I just lost my foot. According to the affidavit, Nash failed field sobriety tests and told arresting officers while getting blood drawn at a hospital, quote, we all know I was under the influence. The North Texas teen who suffered burns to 90% of her body responded to some small commands given to her by doctors. 17-year-old Madison Lewis was severely burned two weeks ago when she was near a burn barrel that erupted in flames. Her mother says another teen threw a pan with gasoline into the fire. The teen has undergone multiple surgeries already. Her mother says Madison made some small movements on command with her tongue. That is a positive sign. There is a chance she may have lost function of her left eye, Madison was put back into a medically induced coma as her body works hard to heal. As the Cowboys gear up for Sunday's game at Washington, left guard Tyler Smith 
did not practice Wednesday as he continues to deal with a foot injury. But starting defensive tackle Jonathan Hankins did have a limited practice after missing the last three games with a high ankle sprain. The Cowboys can win the NFC East with a victory Sunday. Even though the Commanders have just four wins on the season, the Cowboys remember last year when they lost in Washington in the last game of the regular season. Head coach Mike McCarthy says the Eagles lost to the Cardinals last weekend should be good motivation to make sure his team takes care of business. You know, we were in this, you know, same position last year going to Washington for the last game and, you know, both teams were, you know, the records are what they are, but uh, we have a lot to play for, and it's important for us to make sure that we go down there and uh, you know win this game and, and do it the right way. Um, but yeah, I, I I was you know not surprised at all, just because you know I, I think the Cardinals have been in almost every game. Obviously, you know uh, we 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 faced them earlier in the year. So, but um, you know in a lot of ways the playoffs, you know everybody's been fighting these last couple of weeks, and the games have been incredible, and I think we're definitely lined up for another great Sunday. You can see the Cowboys take on the Commanders Sunday afternoon at 325 on Fox 4. Seven Dallas Cowboys have been selected to take part in this year's Pro Bowl. Quarterback Dak Prescott, lineman Zach Martin and star receiver CeeDee Lamb made the cut. On defense we have linebacker Micah Parsons and defensive back Deron Bland. And on special teams, kicker Brandon Aubrey and punter Brian Anger will play as well. Six of the guys will be starting in the game, the only exception being Dak, who will be backup to San Francisco's quarterback Brock Purdy. It is the second straight year that seven Cowboys made the team. The Pro Bowl acts as the NFL's version of an all-star game. The flag football matchup takes place on February 4th. Dallas-based TGI Fridays announced it will be closing dozens of restaurants nationwide. The company called the transition a way to maintain revenue while committing to the brand. Fridays says 36 underperforming locations will close across the U.S. The full list of the restaurants that are closing has not yet been released, but the company plans to offer those affected employees transfer opportunities. Coming up on Fox 4 News. The incredible fog that blanketed the skies over parts of North Texas earlier today. And a big storm system moving through parts of the country next week. We'll talk about that coming up. HEB is holding job fairs for two of its newest stores opening in North Texas. The new locations will be up and running in the spring. One store is in Mansfield, the other in North Fort Worth. Each store is looking to fill 500 jobs. Most positions will start at $15.50 an hour with a 10% discount on store merchandise. There are two job fairs next week, one on Tuesday in Fort Worth, then Wednesday in Midlothian. For more information, we have a link uh, on our website, fox4news.com. Well, it was quite the scene in the skies this morning as thick fog moved through. This is time-lapse video from our downtown Dallas Tower Cam. And in the thick of it all, hard to see, but you're looking at the Margaret Hunt Hill uh, Bridge west of downtown Dallas. And check out these images sent to us from a Fox 4 viewer on a flight traveling over downtown Dallas on a Southwest Airlines flight headed to Kansas City. Hmm, quite a view. Well, we have an active stretch of weather ahead, not just here in North Texas, but across much of the country as well. Starting with tonight, we're expecting widespread showers to break out overnight. This will be done with by tomorrow morning, but notice on Saturday, there is a slight chance for a few sprinkles. And then next Monday, an even stronger storm system will bring another opportunity for some showers and perhaps some thunderstorms across the area as well. So take a look at the parade of systems moving across the area. First one arrives tonight with it, those showers. We do stay mainly dry through the week and maybe a shower isolated one on Saturday. But then on Monday, here comes the next system. And with that, we are expecting widespread showers and some storms to break out across the area once again. As far as how much rain we'll see over the next week or so, looking good, perhaps an inch or two across most of North Texas will certainly take 
all the rain we can get after such a dry 2023. But let's talk about that next storm system on Monday. This is going to be a big one uh, for much of the country. Notice we, we see this thing really ramping up once it passes us by. Uh, severe risk across the Gulf South. Behind it, snow from the Great Lakes back over into the Great Plains. Not going to see anything here in North Texas, but still going to be uh, quite chilly behind this system. This quickly moves up into the northeast. This is going to be a strong nor'easter bringing snow up to the northeast and plenty of snow uh, across the, uh, uh, the Great Lakes region and down into the Appalachian Mountains as well. So this is going to take a lot of headlines heading into next week. Shifting gears a bit to the rest of today, we will see increasing clouds as we head towards this afternoon and especially into tonight. <clears throat> High temperatures should top out in the upper 50s this afternoon, but heading into tonight, we are going to see those rain chances on the increase, especially after dark. Right now, best coverage looks to be between 9 p.m. and around 3 a.m. Should be over with by tomorrow morning. Let's time this out on Futurecast. 5 o'clock increasing clouds across the area. Notice here comes the rain overnight. So it is going to be a rainy night across North Texas. This is midnight, but notice this thing quickly moves out. And by the time you get up tomorrow morning, we are dry once again. Though there will be some lingering clouds across the area. We'll see decreasing clouds heading into Friday afternoon and Friday evening. Now on Saturday, another disturbance will bring increasing clouds by Saturday morning. And like I was saying, there could be an isolated shower or two on Saturday. So certainly check in with Kylie on Saturday morning for the latest information on that. Looking around the country, certainly a January chill, plenty of 30s, 40s, and 50s. I think at night over the next five days or so, we should be pretty close to average lows, mid to upper 30s to lower 40s. During the day, same thing, average highs, 56, will be pretty close to that through the weekend. Up in Canada, though, the cold air is really starting to build up. Look at this, negative 36 degrees in Yellowknife, negative 27 in the Rankin Inlet, so some of that really cold Siberian air is starting to work its way on our side of the globe. And heading into the second half of January, we're really going to have to keep an eye up in Canada as that cold air continues to build. Notice Climate Prediction Center forecasting below average temperatures for much of the eastern or excuse me, western two thirds of the United States. So certainly not looking warm at all as we get into the middle middle and later parts of January. We'll be watching. All right, so here's that seven day forecast. We're watching rain chances tonight, maybe a stray shower on Saturday, but Monday looks wet once again with an 80% chance of showers and storms behind that system sharply colder heading into next Tuesday. All right, thanks Dylan. And that's a look at what's making news in North Texas. Of course, for news anytime, it's fox4news.com.